Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. I want to welcome our sister Fatima from Malaysia. We've missed you and we're very happy that you are able to join us. Alhamdulillah, thank you, Uncle Sari. I <laughs> hope you are well. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Um, Sister Warda, can I ask you to uh, start with the dua, opening dua for us, inshallah? A'udhu billahi minna shaitanir rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashrafil mursaleen, sayyidina wa nabiyyana wa maulana muhammadin, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahumma ilman nafi'an, wa rizqan wasi'an, wa halalan tuiban, wa qalban hashiyan, wa lisanan dakiran, wa tawbatan nasuha, wa tawbatan qabla al-mawt, wa rahatan ba'da al-mawt, wa afwal ayna al-khisab, wa al-fawza bil-jannata wa al-najata min al-nar, ya aziz, ya ghafar, ya rabb al-alamin, subahana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun, wa salamun ala al-mursal, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alamin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa ashabi wa barik wa sallim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa akhlul ukadatan milisani yafqahu kawli. We ended off last week. We starting tonight with part five of Allah nuru samawati wal ard. Um... Part five, we're nearing the end now. Um, so what I just want to say that the what we ended off last time uh, on was um, a very, very interesting discussion. And I hope, inshallah, we will be able to find time to continue with it because we were talking about the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And... Um, there's no end to these discussions. It can continue forever. But tonight, we're going to go on to the lamp. <clears throat> now, just as a reminder, let me quickly go to that. Um, the lamp is within glass. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the lamp is within glass, the glass as if it were a pearly white star. We said something about glass, we said something about uh, the white star and now tonight inshallah we're going to go to the lamp itself. Now, in terms of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala refers to in, in this verse, there are three specific elements of the lamp that's referred to. The lamp itself, the glass, and the oil. We will, we've touched on the glass. We're going to come to the oil, but we will look at the, the lamp now, the thing that we have to remind ourselves about is that light, the origin, where it comes from, can only come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You cannot refer to light having a source that is other than originating from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in our created world, the lamp refers to the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now we said earlier on that the niche is the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the, the lamp itself is in that niche and that lamp is the nur 
of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Allah reminds us, Allah is the light. Um, and further on, Allah also says to us in, in the Quran that Allah is the owner of the heavens and the earth and everything in it. The point here is that no matter how we explain things or others explain things, we must not forget that ownership of everything in creation belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, whether it is in the form of uh, the lamp here, even the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, although it is the entity that is referred to as the lamp uh, in our created world, um, the ultimate owner of even the lamp and everything else in creation can only be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, it's an obvious point, but I thought it's an important reminder at this stage. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses <clears throat> different means to perform different tasks. We earlier used the example that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses clouds as a means to bring us rain. But the rain comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The cloud, yes, we can discuss its hydrogen and oxygen molecules that come together in a certain way. And when it condenses, it comes in the form of rain. We can explain how the laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala works. But ultimately, the cloud is only a means of the rain. And in the same way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses different things. In this instance, Allah chose the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as a means to bring light to this world. The niche, a niche within which is a lamp. And we said the niche is the heart of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but it's not the heart that is the lamp. The heart contains the lamp, the nur, that is the lamp. Now, the function of the lamp is to spread the light. Now, the first um, purpose is to, for Rasulullah, that light, that nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is supposed to guide all of humanity towards monotheism, true belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to take people out of the darkness of disbelief and unbelief or uncertainty of belief into true and proper belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the very first purpose of why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has used Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his nur uh, to perform that function. The second function is that that nur is supposed to also serve as a practical guide and example on how we should live our lives in a, in a, in, in, in a daily manner, in an everyday manner, in a way where it is pleasing to Allah, where we do the things that we are commanded to do and we stay away from those things that uh, 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 are prohibited. <clears throat> So in a sense, what we can say is the, the lamp can be viewed when Allah refers to the lamp, a niche within which is a lamp. The lamp can be viewed as that divine message that Allah chose Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to bring to humanity. And it manifested when Allah revealed the Quran to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and guided him to live the Quran in a practical way. So if we look at the purpose of the lamp is to bring us the revealed book as well as the practical example because Allah doesn't just create us and leave us as, as human beings uh, on this planet or on the dunya. 
um, for us to try and find our own way. Allah has guided us through the Quran, the actual book, Allah's book, and the example of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now these things might sound very obvious and things that we are familiar with. So when we talk about um, the lamp, the beginning of the ayah, Allah says, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. Yes, Allah is the light, is the owner, the controller, the governor of everything in creation. But how that light manifests, Allah chose the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So when we talk about the lamp, we must not make the mistake to say that the lamp that is being referred to is the lamp that represents Allah. That would be a gross, gross, gross false interpretation of what this verse means. Because the lamp is, as we said now, the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but Allah's light manifests in creation um, in the form of the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, many people have said, yeah, but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he wasn't a malaika. Uh, he, he, he's an ordinary man. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the highest creation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose him for a specific task to guide all of humanity. So he was everything but an ordinary man because whatever he did, Allah guided him and inspired him to do things with the clear idea that his lifestyle would act as a means of assisting human beings. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not guide us and we were left on our own, can we think or imagine what would have happened if there was no Quran and no Sunnah? If Allah just created human beings with their mind and with choice and they had to find out on their own what is right and what is wrong. And then at the end of that, all of that, you die and then you stand in front of Allah and then Allah, Allah will, will, will question you, why did you do this or that? Can we see the importance of firstly the Quran that Allah guided us with the Quran, but secondly, the great mercy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to humanity in the form of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When, therefore, when we say, Rahmatul Alameen, Alameen for all the worlds, a mercy unto all the worlds and all of creation. Because without that, we would be struggling with everything that we come across. People will have their own interpretations of what Allah says in the Quran about this and that and that and that and would come to different conclusions. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was a true, 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 true mercy to all of creation. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <clears throat> says in this verse that this lamp, which is the heart, uh, the niche is the heart and the lamp is the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah says, lit from the oil of a blessed olive tree, neither of the east nor of the west. Now, I want to pause here, actually, and just hear, if you had to come across this now on your own, how would, how would you interpret this? What does this actually mean? Let's deal with the first part. Let from the oil of a blessed olive tree. And then we deal with uh, the, the second part of the sentence later on. Let from the oil of a blessed olive tree. How would you understand that? I'm opening the floor.
Uh, Assalamualaikum, Amir Buta. Waalaikumsalam, um, Sister Warta. Um, yo, <laughs> I'm just trying, uh, uh, taking um, a chance here. Lit, meaning the light. Allah is the source of the light. Um, from the olive tree, I think could be um, reference to the place um, where the olive tree grows is, but but then it says not from the east or the west, which means it is not just limited to that. Our Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam was um, he lived in the in the place where the olive trees are present. I don't know. This is just a wild card. Okay. So, <laughs> yes. Shukran. Okay. Shukran for at least attempting to 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 grapple with it because if you didn't come across what we're going to deal with now in our explanation, you would come up with that in your own mind. Therefore, it's important to, to know how, how is it that you understand or how do you actually understand this and what does it mean? But let me go on. Is there anyone else who would like to take, take a, a, a bite at this? If not, let me let me um, let me go on. Um, uh, so lit from the 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 oil of a blessed olive tree. Uh, I better put this. We must first get an idea. Why is it that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about an olive tree? What is it that is significant or unique about the olive tree? Now, olive tree in, in our world um, is a unique type of tree. Yes, it, it comes from a specific part of the world. But in this instance, the oil is what Allah is referring to. The oil which lights the lamp comes from the olive tree. Why the olive tree? Now the olive tree, the oil that they extract from the olive tree is is used as a means to fuel lamps or other other needs that we have for fuel. Now, what is it in 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 the worldly situation that is unique about the oil? The oil from 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 the olive tree can be, unlike most other fuels can be processed with uh, can, can be used immediately straight if you extract the oil you can use it immediately as a type of fuel whereas if you look at most other uh, uh, fuels types of fuel it needs to be processed first uh, we think, uh, for example of uh, petroleum Petro petroleum in its crude form uh, cannot really be used uh, the way it is currently used uh, without it first being processed. And the other thing that makes it unique is that the olive oil, the oil is much safer because it doesn't catch a light as quickly as, as for example, uh, a petrol. Petrol, uh, petroleum uh, ignites at 120 degrees and the ignition point for olive oil is quite high it's 280 degrees more than double the um, uh, flash point so already we can see that the difference between ordinary oil that we are familiar with and the oil there's a there's a distinct difference. There's, it's unique in that way. 
And also what makes it different is that it lasts much longer. The same amount will last much longer and it's almost odorless and doesn't generate a lot of smoke while it is burning, while it's being used. Now, just taking all of these things, already one can see that the oil that is being referred to Allah is giving us the impression that there is a unique feature about this type of oil, which gives us the link to the olive tree. But Allah also uses the word blessed. Now, blessed means that it's not just that the olive tree is unique, but it is a blessed, which means it's not even an ordinary olive tree. Like the, it's, it's compared to the olive tree with all these unique uh, and, and peculiar and extraordinary uh, uh, qualities compared to other oils, but it's also a blessed, telling us that the lamp, let's get back to the lamp now, the lamp is the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's referred to as the lamp lit from the oil of a blessed olive tree. Not an olive tree, but it's blessed. Which means that that light of the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's the ultimate source. It's not an it's, it's unique in a worldly situation, but it's it's even beyond that. It's a blessed. It's a, it's it's it's, a, it's unique in, in 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 that respect. So, to try and extract the meaning of what this first part of the sentence means, there should be no connection. to our earthly lamps and how they operate and what their needs are and what Allah is referring to um, this lamp that's located in the niche. Now I just thought that it would be important. <clears throat> Last week we spoke about um, the intensity of this nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We said it's, I'm going to just quote the figure again. I'm, I didn't put it up again. We said that the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if we look at what scientists have told us, that the first spark of nur, which we understand to be the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created everything, was so intense, the, com the, the scientific community say that right at the beginning of our own universe, there was a single spark of Nur. Up to that point, we were on the same page. But then they went further to try and calculate what was the intensity of this Nur, of this first spark from which everything in the entire universe uh, evolved. 10 to the power 42 degrees Celsius. They've calculated this using very sophisticated uh, equipment and, 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 and observations and stuff and came to 10 to the power 42 degrees Celsius. So if we talk about the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the lamp now, then we must keep in mind that this individual that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is using is special in relation to the rest of creation, but very, very special and the most special in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But despite his elevated station and and, and being so special, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says 
in the Quran, indeed Allah showers his blessings upon the Prophet and his angels pray for him. O believers, invoke Allah's blessings upon him. Allah, Allah says, Allah and the Malaika, they send salawat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Allah instructs us to do the same. Now he's the most special, he's the most elevated, he has the most elevated station in all of creation, yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instructs us to do it. Then there's the hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam um, quoted and he, he said, this is actually a hadith that comes um, uh, by a Jibreel, where, where Jibreel alayhi salam um, spoke to him and told him this hadith that was, uh, that's quoted here. Whoever sends blessings upon me, once Allah will send blessings upon him tenfold and will erase from him 10 misdeeds and raise him 10 degrees in status. The hadith takes different forms depending on who's quoting it, but it, it, it even adds, will erase from him uh, 10 uh, misdeeds and reward him um, as if he has done 10 uh, good deeds. Now, is this the purpose why we must send salawat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? That Allah instructs us. Send salawat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so that we can benefit. Because look how special Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the most loved and the, occupies the highest station in creation. Do we only benefit is he in the highest place already? Now, I've heard people make comment on this. And they said, no, sending salawat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is only of benefit to us, the ones who are sending salawat. I want to pause there now. And I want to ask the question. Is this so or is this not, not so? Is it only beneficial for us? I'm going to open the floor on this. If you're not sure about the question, you can ask me to repeat it. But I'm opening the floor now and I hope people will participate. Maybe you should kick off Sidi Mudathir. <laughs> Welcome. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, do you want to make a comment on, on, on this question? If we send salawat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, um, because of the high status that Allah has accorded him already in relation to everything in creation, does it mean that us sending salawat um, is only of benefit to us? Uh, Rob, good question, Uncle Saleh. Uh, I think I have two points maybe to, to mention. Yes. Uh, firstly, when uh, one sin salawat upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I think firstly we have to understand that uh, we are not, uh, technically we're not sending the salawat, we're asking Allah, so we're saying Allahumma salli. So we ask Allah to send the salawat upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa so uh, they already, uh, I think we are, are gaining or we are receiving uh, blessings because we obviously be mentioning, we are remembering Allah first of all. So Allah says, Fadkuruni afkurku, you remember me and then I'll remember you. So the first bonus we get is that Allah will remember us. Uh, then secondly, um, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says the salawat upon the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I would think that this means there's virtues for the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu as well because Allah is mentioning is Allah is sending salawat upon him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So um, I think I'll leave that there. Maybe Uncle Saleh can tell me what I said. Uh, if it's correct or maybe there's some 
faults in what I've said. No. Shukran. It's fine. Shukran. Shukran for those uh, uh, valuable comments. I want to ask if there's any other comment uh, anyone would like to add to that. Um, because we are saying he's the highest in creation and he's the most loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the most special creation. Does our salawat benefit him if he's already on that high station? Is there anyone else who would like to add? Uh, may I attempt, Kanala? Please, please do. Um, I think uh, because our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as Allah says, um, the source of light, of illumination, is via our Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, when we ask Allah to, when we make salawat and um, a request of Allah to um, convey the salawat, it gains um, power or more of the illumination than it reaches the earth because he is the source. So even the world, uh, animate and inanimate, benefits from the illumination that comes from our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So beyond what we can imagine, um, I don't know if I'm on the right track. Shukran. No, those are very good comments. Both are valuable comments. Um, the, the, your point, I haven't even considered. I must ponder on that, uh, uh, Sister Warda, um, that if everything was created from the, the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how does he benefit? Does it mean that his nur increases? Here's my, my response to this. Um, <clears throat> if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his blessings on anything, is it not obvious that they must be benefit? It doesn't matter on who or what Allah sends his blessings. So those people, because I've heard the comment, if you make salawat, the benefit is only for you because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa was created as a perfect human being. I've heard that comment from actually a very senior person um, or, or, or respectable person and I disagreed with it but I didn't want to do it obviously I'm raising this point now so that we can clarify it if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends his blessings on anything Allah is the owner and controller of everything and can do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants so it must be of benefit to us yes because Allah returns the benefit, the salawat to us and sends the blessings on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa So both the, 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 the one who sends and the one who receives uh, both benefit out of it. I think both of you have made that, that, that comment. Now I want to in fact even add this. that as elevated as the daraja, the, 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 the station of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is, it is a station in creation. It's a station that can never ever be compared with our Rabb. There is absolutely no connection between level, the level of or the maqam or, 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 or elevated position that he occupies to that of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But wherever that level might be now, my view is that every single time we send salutations on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then it is elevated to an even higher level. Subhanallah. How can it not be? Logically, it must 
it must be fairly obvious that if Allah sends his salawat and the barakah descends from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa how can it remain unchanged? So it means that the station of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, whether we send or don't send, Allah is continuously sending uh, salawat on Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, which means it's a level that is continuously elevated and elevated and elevated. And when, when we do it, then it contributes to that elevation because as, as was indicated by Sidi Mudatir, um, it is done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on our behalf to bless Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we've been told that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returns your salutation because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered him, uh, has ordered the earth not to consume the bodies of the martyrs and the prophets and the uliya. We know that. We've heard that all of the people on this, this platform, you're aware the bodies of the awliya and the martyrs and, and, and the prophets are not consumed by the earth. It's made haram for the earth to consume their bodies. So they are aware of what is happening. So what happens is when Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when we send the salawat, then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa returns the salutations to us. Yes. Yes, yes uh, Sister Fatima. Yeah, can I share a small story that I had when I was in Karim in Yemen in Hadramul? Yes. Um, there was the story of this uh Aulia, and each time it was a long time ago, there was a time that he um uh sent his mid salawat uh, in the jama'ah in the masjid and everyone heard the reply from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Subhanallah. Salam to Rasulullah. Whoever was there heard the salam being replied back. Subhanallah. Yes. Subhanallah. Yeah, yeah. I just can't remember the name of the he um, received his salam and everyone heard it. So it is some. It's, 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 it's actually true. Each time you send your salawat, Rasulullah replies it one by one. So don't stop making yes. salawat. <laughs> yeah. Now, I, 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 well, apart from what you are telling us, uh, Sister Fatima, um, we, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us that if we send salawat on him, he will return it. So even if you tell us you are confirming what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has, has told us that you will return our salawat to us. Now my point, th this information that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returns your, your, your salutations but my point here is when you send salawat on, on Rasulullah you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Bless Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is when Allah blesses your can your position remain the same? No. It has to be raised and elevated. So when you send your salawat, I, I'm just applying pure logic here, nothing else. I didn't get this from any any uh, research. Or, or, or books as just something that struck me from a logical point of view. You send your salawat, Rasulullah sallam is, is raised, he returns his salawat, where he is returning his salawat to you is from a higher level from where you sent it, if you understand what I'm saying. Because Allah has blessed him and raised this is Daraja. Subhanallah. 
uh, may Allah forgive me if I've gone too far in 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 my own um, reflections on 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 this matter. But the best form of salawat is to carry out and follow the example that Allah chose for Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was sent as a light. His light is his actual life that he led and the message that he brought. If we follow that, that is one of the highest form of salawat by following his example in a conscious way saying that I, Rasulullah sallallahu told us this or that or that and, and you are following his example by doing it the way he has prescribed to us. That's the best form of salawat. Subhanallah. The part that says, let me just remind you what we are saying. Um, Lit from the oil of a blessed olive tree, neither from the east nor the west. For those people who joined us a little bit later, we said that the oil of a normal olive tree is very unique compared to other oils and fuels in, in, in our world. But Allah also says that it's a blessed olive tree, which means as unique as it might be compared to other fuel, um, it's also the, the, the lamp, which we said is the nur of Rasulullah is lit from a blessed olive tree. Uniqueness of the olive tree, but it's blessed, which means it's, it, it can't be compared to uh, our earthly lamps neither from the east nor the west. Now, if you read the sentence, lit from the oil of a blessed olive tree, it refers to the oil of the, the olive tree, neither from the east nor of the west. Now, we're just going to look quickly at um, neither from the east nor the west. Now, the... Oh... I didn't share. Subhanallah. <laughs> you must remind me if I don't share because I get lost when I present these things. So it's neither from the east nor the west. Now, why does Allah may use the geographic term? If it's neither from the east nor the west, then where is it from? <laughs> it's either east or west, or, or, or in the middle of the two. Or but the fact that Allah says not from the east nor the west is to give us an indication. It's not from this world, eliminating the possibility that. Where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's nur comes from is not from this world. It's not, it's, it, 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 it has no connection. Um, oh, uh, let me not use the word connection because there is a connection afterwards. But where it originates from and where it draws its light from is not from the world it has to come from the divine presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what the, the term implies not from the east or, or the west don't compare the light of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa or, or, or not the light the oil or, or, or what fuels the lamp to anything in creation Then the verse goes on, neither from the east nor the west. No, we're talking about the lamp, the lamp whose oil almost glow even if untouched by fire. The oil glows, almost glows, even if untouched by fire. In our world, if you want to set the fuel alight, 
you need a spark or a match. If you take an actual lamp, you take the lamp and you take a match and you light uh, the wick which is soaked in, in, in oil or petrol or whatever and or paraffin and then it, 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 it burns. Or if you take a, a car, then what the car requires is that the fuel, the petrol of the car needs a spark. That's why we have spark plugs in cars. That supplies the spark to ignite the petrol. So a spark is needed. And the spark is what this verse refers to as fire. So in order to create that fire, you need a spark to light the fuel. And then it gives off uh, heat and energy and, 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 and light. Of course, you need oxygen as well. Um, because without oxygen, uh, the, 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 the fire can't burn. Now, when Allah says whose oil, the oil of the lamp would almost glow even if untouched by fire. What Allah is saying to us is again emphasizing in so many places that although material examples are used of an olive tree, a lamp, a glass, and all of those things, Allah emphasizes that the actual fuel of this light of the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does not come from anything that is linked to the world. Because Allah's light, divine light, Allah's nur, does not depend on a trigger or a spark or a match or a substance like oxygen is required to keep the, 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 the fire going. Um, <clears throat> Allah's never in need. If Allah needs anything, Allah says, just gives the instruction, kun, uh, and then it is. So, whose oil almost glow, even if untouched by fire, we need to understand correctly, though, uh, then, is that, yes, it doesn't come from the east of the west, so where does it come from? It comes from the divine presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah reinforces it, by saying that this type of light from this lamp does not require what you normally require uh, in, in a worldly situation if you talk about fire or a lamp or oil or whatever. And Allah is never in need. I think um, Allah doesn't require certain conditions to be met. If there's no oxygen, then uh, you can't breathe. If there's no oxygen, the fire can't breathe. The fire dies or you die because there's no oxygen. Allah is not dependent on, on conditions. Allah is utterly and totally self-reliant and that is the source from which the nur of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is fed from. It's from that uh, uh, divine fountain of nur that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's um, nur or the lamp which is located in his heart is actually uh, fueled from. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses light um, and, and we've made it clear that the light, and we've gone through quite a bit of technical explanation about the qualities and the attributes of light in our universe. Um, we know there is no comparison between Allah's light and light of our universe. But if we look at the important role that light plays 
in our worldly situation, it's without light, there's, there's no life on earth. It's the uh, most crucial form of heat and energy. It's not just to illuminate things so that it becomes visible. But if you look at just those three things that I've mentioned here, without illumination, because light must be reflected off an object for us to be able to see it. If it's not reflected off an object, you won't be able to see it. That reflected light is um, what the eye then uh, understands as the image. You won't be able to see anything. And without light, if we just go to the sun, in our instance, there will be absolutely no life. The energy that we need to survive on our planet Earth is from the sun. And we've been through that. And without the heat of the sun, the light in the form of the sun, uh, our planet Earth will turn into a ball of ice. There will be absolutely no earth. There will be no life. So light in the material will play such a crucial role that if we reflect and ponder, why does Allah use the word light? Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. Because light of light in the worldly situations in the heaven and the earth is an absolutely crucial requirement. And Allah uses that as an analogy, as an example of the importance of light so that when we talk about Allah is the light of the heavens in the earth, we can actually um, start understanding. It's not just a statement. Allah is the light of the heavens in the earth and we move on to the next thing. When Allah uses um, different means to explain, we must go into the actual word. Why is Allah using light? Why is Allah using an olive tree or glass or, 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 or in this particular verse? People have spoken endlessly, <laughs> almost endlessly, about the spiritual significance of this verse. And if we have to give, do justice to it, we must, for ourselves, Go into it and try and understand why is it that Allah is using this word or that example or, or whatever. I want to end tonight off because the next thing we're going to, to go on to is something that Allah speaks about light upon light, uh, which is a topic on its own. And I'm not even going to attempt to start this now. I'm rather going to leave it for next week, inshallah. And then we'll, we'll, we'll continue our explanation. But for tonight, I'm concluding um, on, on what we've said up to now. And I'm opening the floor now for comments or questions. The floor is open. Assalamu alaikum, Kusani. Um, I'm just thinking about what the study said about the the fact that the light that we're speaking about is nowhere representative of what we of what we see in this world. So in a sense, also one could say that the expression of light is in itself what light means in this dunya. Because also uh, when we talk about things that are um that are good, things that are um that, that, that they have some benefit we speak about like for instance someone is the light in my life oh, yes. there's this metaphorical sense to it or similarly they brought light to the darkness so the overwhelming concept of light in this dunya is good and 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 uh, illumination and greatness in a sense uh, and so when we talk about that kind of light it is some. It, it, it is the, the the essence. For me, it seems like the essence of the best form of benefit that the world can receive. And I mean, from that light comes the the concept of the nur of Rasulullah as well. Another light, in a sense, a light of 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 barakah of uh, 
of uh, mercy, subhanAllah, the nur of Rasulullah so, uh, so, so, so it, it seems to me that that the when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about Allah being the light of the heavens and the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking also about Allah being the only benefit and the ultimate benefit of the heavens and the earth, if I, if I can put it like that. And then Allah sends his Rasul uh, as, 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 a, a, as, as a light from which the whole dunya is created and to which the whole dunya is in a sense uh, dependent. should be obedient to his to his his uh, to his uh, his lessons and his teaching because the whole dunya was created from his nur subhanallah so kind of like for me I'm just looking at it from a metaphorical sense because the reality of, of what Prasad is mentioned also in terms of the the the, the 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 fact that this this is not something that is is is, is a type of light that is present in the dunya. Uh, for me, I feel that uh, um, that concept is is because I think sometimes when we hear light, we automatically turn our mind to a physical source of light. And um, when 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 a person explains these concepts in such a broad manner, that allows a person's mind to actually click and they realize that nothing on this dunya is comparable to what we're speaking about. SubhanAllah. Alhamdulillah. Shukran. Shukran for that, Muhammad Fasil. Any other comment? Um, question? Yes. Please, please do. Please do um, I can't help but um, dwelling more on the reference to the olive, the blessed olive tree. Yes, please do. Um, that Allah had actually um, mentioned th that the, all of the blessings and, and research has shown that the pro apart from um, the phys physical and chemical reference that uh, uh, Buddha Sali had referred to, um, the health benefits of um, olive oil especially. But if I think um, if we when we use olive oil um, with more consciousness that it represents what Allah um, refers to as with the, the illumination that's in the chest cavity or the lamp in inverted commas of our Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and, and combine it with consciousness there would probably be more blessings, I think, specifically to us from our point of view. I don't know if, I, if I'm off the point, but I'm just thinking of that, inshallah. Yeah, no, shukran, Sister Warda. It's an angle that I didn't uh, think of or include in, 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 in uh, the question of olive oil, for example, because Allah is speaking about the oil of the, the olive tree. The point about the olive tree is the uniqueness of its oil. Um, and it's already it's unique. And then Allah makes it the blessed olive, olive tree. So there would probably be a number of other things that one could even add, some of which you, you, you have mentioned. It's also uh, something that we eat. Uh, that, uh, some people love eating olives, for example. Uh, apart from the oil that you use for, for, for medical and medicinal purposes and so on. So there would be more benefits that one can extract. Um, and I think it's, 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 it's good that you've, you've mentioned that. Um, yeah, the fact that it's blessed even makes it even more than that. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Any final question or comment? If not, then we're going to conclude on, the, on, on, on that note. Alhamdulillah, next week we'll come to um, Light Upon Light, inshallah, uh, which is the one uh, sentence that when people speak about this verse, they always refer to, to Light Upon Light. Um, 
inshallah next week we will be adding uh, that to what we are going to be dealing with inshallah so I'm going to ask Muhammad Fasih to conclude with a, with a dua for us inshallah أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر إن الإنسان لفي خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواسوا بالحق وتواسوا بالصبر صلى الله عليه وسلم دعوهم في سبحانك اللهم وتحيتهم في السلام وأحلو دعوانا الحمد لله رب العالمين, رب العالمين. Shukran jazilan to everyone. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep you all safe. And I hope inshallah to see you next week. Assalamu um, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam sister Fatima. I was very happy to see you join us today. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum.